Learn a new object. Latte Panda. I see a Latte Panda. I see a Latte Panda. everyone I am here we can oh that's even better when I, you can hear me right what we're gonna do is something that uh, we've been working on on a different project and it just got me thinking it's like hey I think that people in the community would like to see how to do this it's not super complicated but it's really fun it's kind of neat what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a uh, uh, a script we're gonna well a couple different things here let's start off is we're going to uh, make it so um, you can essentially um, ask the robot to learn an object and then it'll uh, memorize the object and then when it sees the object it'll say what it is okay and you can do this so we'll essentially loop this so we can do this a bunch of times <laughs> right so there oops okay and that's essentially what we're gonna do. So um, I'm gonna make a quick project. We'll do it on my computer first, on my laptop, so you can see everything I'm doing. And then once we get it all set up, we can save the project and import it into the InMove, which is behind me. And we'll use the InMove, which is actually on, he's just not doing anything right now. Um, we'll use him to, uh, to learn the objects and then like maybe point at them or something like that. It'll be fun. I just, I don't really use the InMove very often, but we started to use them just recently. And I'm a fan. I really do like the InMove. It's pretty cool. Bum, bum, bum. So how are we going to do it? What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, obviously, boat arc. <laughs> and we're going to use uh, speech recognition. And we'll add a phrase. And the phrase that it's going to detect is going to be something like, um, learn a new object. Okay? And then what that's going to do is it's going to um, ask what the object name is. And then we're going to use Bing speech recognition. And this is from Microsoft. This is using the Azure, Microsoft Azure Bing speech recognition. And then uh, it's going to ask, it's going to use that, and it's going to say, uh, it's going to grab the variable, essentially. Okay? So we'll just say, like, you know, object name. And then that object name is going to, we're going to use a plugin called train object by script, I think it's called. This is a, a robot skill, and it's going to take the object name, and then we're going to, uh, before that, I think, what we'll do is we're going to um, have the robot ask, um, let me know when you're ready. So with the robot, we want the robot to give us some time so that um, we can get the object in front of it and be all prepared, right? So let the object know when we're ready, and then it'll wait for speech, so something like us to say OK or cancel. Okay, and then it'll run the train by script. Um, essentially, what we'll do is we'll hold the object up to the robot camera, and it'll learn the object. And then what we'll do, um, that's all going to be started from the speech recognition. And then what we'll do is we're going to, um, I guess, in the camera device, we're going to make it so that when tracking, uh, when it detects an object, and tracking starts, we're gonna have it um, speak and say, I see an object, and we'll put like whatever that object name is, right? We'll just say, I see blah, blah, blah. And then um, that's it, right? Doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, when you think about it, like in the grand scheme of like what robots can do, uh, it's pretty cool. So let us begin. I'm going to load Arc. And I'm going to set this up on my laptop. And what we'll do is we'll use the camera that's on the, on the InMove. And then we'll merge this project from my laptop to the InMove um, 
when it's ready. So we'll start by adding a camera. And the InMove has a camera, so let's scan the network and find that camera. There it is. Awesome. We can see. Now let's move the, uh, we'll just move to the second desktop here. And we're going to add some speech recognition on the second desktop. Speech recognition, where are you? There we are. And then what we need is the Bing speech recognition. This one. So we can we can use Bing. That allows us to use like um, I forget what it is, like a thousand commands a month or something, or whatever it is, or X number of commands per day. And then there's advanced, which means if advanced is you want to set up your own account with Azure and and pay it for yourself, you can do like unlimited, well, unlimited as much as your credit card allows. So we'll use Bing speech recognition. So the reason why we're using Either of these is because the Bing speech recognition, if it were to listen all the time, um, it would get really expensive. So we can trigger Bing speech recognition by pushing this button, or we can use a control command. So speech recognition, this one, is always active. This is using the Windows internal speech recognition system, which means that um, it'll always be listening to whatever I'm saying, and that will be very good for us. Now let's just make sure that my the, the system that we're using for recording, choose my microphone. It says it's using HD Pro Webcam. That's probably not what we want. I think we want to use this microphone. Is that not it? No. Maybe this one. There we go. Yeah, that's the one, USB audio device. Hello, hello, yep. So that way it's using the microphone I'm talking into rather than trying to use some random, because there's so many microphones, all these cameras have microphones. So um, I don't think this switches in real time, does it? Hello? Hello? Testing? This is going to be really loud on your ears? Seems like it does. Yeah. Okay. So it seemed like it switched in real time, so that's good news. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll edit the speech recognition here. And we'll add a new phrase, which is going to be uh, learn a new object. So that's the phrase that when the robot hears me speak, it's going to execute this code that we're going to add. Now, we're going to write some JavaScript because JavaScript is great. Um, the first thing I think we should do is have the robot speak. So we'll go audio.say. And do we want it to come out of the EZB? I don't think it's necessary. Let's have it just come out of the, out of the PC speaker, and um, I'm going to have the robot speak and say, okay, what is the name of the new object? So it's going to say that to me, and then what we'll do is um, we can launch the Bing speech recognition. We'll tell it to start listening, and before we start listening, if we look here, the Bing speech recognition will put its response inside of this variable here called Bing speech recognition. So what we can do is we can actually set this variable to empty. So therefore, if anything's ever in there, it'll always be empty. And then what we'll do is we'll tell it to start listening, and then we'll loop forever while the speech recognition is empty. And then we'll just like sleep for you know 250 milliseconds or something. So essentially, what we're doing is we're just saying because um, that whatever the speech recognition hears, like in the, in that module hears, it's going to put that phrase inside of this variable. So we're just going to keep looping and not do anything until that variable is populated. Because once it's populated, then it contains whatever it was that we said, right? So that's one way to uh, wait for the, the speech recognition to finish. And then what we'll do is uh, now that we have that variable. We'll speak again and say, and we'll wait until it's completed, and we'll say, you know, excellent. Um, let me know when you are ready to learn, are ready to teach me the, what's the right grammar here? What a, and then we'll put that command, or that variable is. Okay? So here, I'll slide this over a little bit for you. So you can see what I wrote. So after, after we get that command, 
or we, we get the, the name of the object. We're just going to have the robot interact with us, right? Add some sort of like personality to this whole process. And we could, you know, maybe later, I doubt tonight because I don't know if I have the energy, but, you know, another time we can get dive into using one of the AIML or na um, NLP, like the natural language processing, to be able to uh, narrow down exactly and have a conversation dialogue and get exactly what it is that you're saying. That would be actually a lot of fun. I'm going to make mental note. NLP next live hack or one of the, the future ones. You guys let me know. Um, okay, so now it's spoken and said let me know when you're ready to teach it to me. So now we want to um, make a variable just called response and we want to go audio dot uh, wait for speech. And the timeout is in seconds, so we'll wait for 60 seconds and we'll say, you know, okay or cancel. And now if the response doesn't equal okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to speak and say, and again, we can wait and say, um, okay, I will not learn the, and we'll put the variable in here. <laughs> because we have the variable, we might as well use it, have a lot of fun with it. And then we'll return from the whole script. So return, you can also use a command called halt which will exit the script and stop it, but return just means return from the main function, right? So the reason why I put this in lowercase as well, as you should know, is uh, wait for speech will always return whatever the phrase is, it'll always return it as a lowercase. And you'll be able to see that when you look in the variable manager um, later, after it's ran. You'll be able to see that the response object is contains lower lowercase. Okay, so now that we have that, um, we want to make sure that the camera is not currently tracking anything at all. So we want to disable um, object tracking. So let's go to object tracking and we'll say disable. And because we don't want to track, we don't want it to learn anything while we're training it, right? At the same time, because that would get really confused. And now we want to save this because we're missing a control. And the control that we're missing that I mentioned in our and here is something called train object by script. So this skill, this control skill here, is train object by script, right here, train vision object by script. So we'll click on this and download it, install it. There we go. So what this will do is this will, um, will connect to the camera and it'll run through the whole training process. So as you might be familiar with already, when you're using the camera, you have the ability to go to object tracking and say train a new object, and you can go through this whole process. This process is uh, is uh, manual normally. So this, this robot skill will do it for us, essentially. Um, so let's go back into our code. And now we want to tell it to start training. So we go train by script, and we say learn, and it wants the object name as a parameter. So the object name we'll give it, as you might have guessed, is the Bing speech recognition. So that's it's going to learn the thing that we told it already. And now we want to like wait until it's completed learning. So let's do a while loop. And if we look through this list, um, there should be under global variables here, something called is learning. There it is, camera is learning, boom. So we want to uh, loop forever while it is learning. We probably want to put a, a, a short sleep in here too of like maybe uh, one second is good. So that way it gives it enough time to, to boot up so it starts learning and then the variable will be set, the variable will be set and then uh, we'll just sleep through this and it's nice that if you're ever doing a while loop that's closed like this, like a really tight, it's called a tight loop. Um, it's nice to put a sleep in there because this is multi-threaded, right? All of arc. And if you're just generally doing programming at all, you should, right? If you're looping for something real quick, just know you're gonna use up all the CPU. So by putting a sleep in there, you're allowing other threads to, to have access to things. And what we'll do is this is gonna loop forever while it's learning. And then once it's done, we'll have the robot speak again and say 
great. I know what a, and I'll put that variable in, is. And then we can turn on object tracking now, because now we've learned everything, and we'll go back into our here, and we'll go object tracking. And it's turned back on. So, I mean, in my head, it should work, but we'll find out when we actually push the run button and see. So let's start by testing it. Um, let's just do a full on test. Let's just do this. Here we go. Now I think I'm gonna need the these all actually on the main desktop only because we need to see in the camera. Um, and we'll have to make this window a little bit smaller. Sort. There we go. And I'll put this speech recognition down here so you can see it. There, just because because my head's in the way in the little window. All right. We'll turn tracking on here, or we'll keep it on object. We can see the objects grow as we add them if this works. All right. So let's do our very first test. Here we go. Learn a new object. Okay, so it did detect that I said it, but it said low confidence. It said it was 75%. So this microphone's not the greatest. Let's turn down the confidence. Let's make it, um, you know, 60 is probably fine. It's really low though. I wouldn't suggest it if you're using a good microphone. Okay. Learn a new object. Okay, what is the name of the new object? Banana. Excellent. Let me know when you are ready to teach me what a banana is. Okay. So it's learning what a banana is just in that middle of that box. So that's not very useful. Great. I know what a banana is. <laughs> okay, it thinks a banana is my arm. <laughs> and the desk. <laughs> so uh, it, we can see it here, it actually added it. So it's great, so we can actually clear all the memory that it's learned because it's unnecessary. Now, when it detects the object, we want the robot to, to do something. So let's wait until um, we get this, on, on, this project onto the InMove, and then it can actually um, it can point and speak. So Okay. What is the name of the new object? <laughs> Cancel. Excellent. Let me know when you are ready to teach me what a cancel is. <laughs> cancel. Okay, so that's something to notice that it detected what I said. Uh, because I did actually say the words, you know, I don't want to say them now because it's going to hear me again, <laughs> but I did say the words, so it, it wanted to pick up. Now, I did say the word cancel when it said, what's the object called? What we can do is we can actually add um, some code in here, just like we did up above, that will do the same thing. So we can just say, if, uh, let's see, wait for it to finish. Okay, right here. We'll just say, if the variable that of Bing speech recognition, um, equals cancel, then we'll just do the same thing here. Uh, with the same thing we did below, is we'll exit. So we'll wait and say canceling. And then we'll just return. There we go. Done. So now we can, if we accidentally, uh, if it starts here at listening to us, we can accidentally, or accidentally hears us, we can exit. So let's save this project. And I'm gonna save it to my local computer. We'll just call this train object by script. And I'm gonna save um, to the cloud. I'll just say it's incomplete and it's not public. And that's good a description. And we'll just, we don't have to put a description or anything, it's fine. Saved, nice. So let's close down this project. I don't know why I said that so slow. 
Let's close down. There we go. Nice. We are ready to rock. Let's make sure that we're running in in a decent in proper power mode. Whenever I've been using computers, because Windows has been doing these crazy updates, trying to uh, save the world's energy crisis concerns. So by default, yeah, this one's already been set, but by default, you'll find that this little under power and sleep performance energy is in the middle. So if you kind of want a computer to work like, you know, what you paid for, uh, go to power and energy and change it to best performance. I, you've seen, anyone who's been on my channel before has probably seen me do this often when I'm installing Windows or setting up Windows on SMB, SBCs, SB, single board computer SBCs. Yeah. I have to look at Jeremy because I get acronyms wrong all the time. <laughs> Let's go to the cloud storage because I'm pretty sure that this is logged in as me. And we'll go to my files. And there it is, train object by script. That's the one we want. I'm gonna save this locally, this project from the cloud. Train object by script. And I think a good thing to start with is let's merge. I see, yeah. Let's merge an existing InMove project. So, because we want the auto position, all the movements for the InMove. So let's grab the InMove project that we already have. And we'll look through the list here. We have auto position, we want that. Um, the camera we don't care about, because we already have one. Initialization script, we should probably grab that. I'm not sure what it does. Mobile interface we don't need. Speed recognition, oh, we need the SSC32 thing. Is that, that's an expansion board. The uh, I think this is running on a easy easy robot easy bv4 but it only has like 25 digital ports for servos and stuff so the fingers 24 oh 24 digital ports so the fingers are hooked up to the ssc32 this in move by the way was built by uh, richard ryerson so not us not to me i cannot get credit for this thing this is the one this is the bartender that pours the wine um, talk servo, yeah, let's add that. Talk servo would be cool because then he moves his mouth and speaks the words. And then train object by script. Oh, there was already one there, but we don't need it. And virtual reality robot. Oh, we don't need we don't need either of these. The virtual reality robot's pretty cool though because you can control the robot with your headset. Okay, I digress. Let's click OK and import all these wonderful things. And then I'll save this. So now our new project has lots of goodies in it. Um, the camera that we're going to use, there's already a camera that's a Microsoft cam in the InMove. Let's connect to that. There we go. And now there's initialization script. I think the script needs to run. Let's take a look and see what's inside of it when the InMove loads. And this script, what does it do? It sets some servo speeds. I think that's for the head. Um, moves into a position, sets some more servo speeds. <clears throat> oh, this is movement set speed, sorry. This is this very top one. This is actually setting the speed for like um, how fast the robot can move in a direction. It 30 is for left wheel, 37 is for the right wheel. I don't know why it's set up that way, but we were playing around with this. Um, virtual reality robot. Can turn that off, unnecessary, and um, it can speak. That's cool. Left arm. I think these were set up before these left arm and right arms because I was using a Wii remote. This digital turn on. I think that turns on the LED that's on the display, and then these set the positions, the limit positions, so that the robot can't move um, too far in a specific direction. So we're going to keep those there, obviously. Those are important. So we'll set the connection control to tell the init script to run when it's connected. We'll do that in JavaScript here. And we'll just say init script start. That's it. 
I really like JavaScript. I I use it a lot. It's fast too. Okay, let's push the start button on the initialization. There we go. So the robot is alive. He is living. Um, now I guess we can just talk to it and do and run our thing. Shall we try? Um, learn a new object. Okay. What is the name of the new object? Beer can. Excellent. Let me know when you are ready to teach me what a beer can is. I am ready. Okay, so now you can see on the, um, the, the control that's called train object by script. You see it's got that little progress bar that's moving. That progress bar is showing me how much of the object it's learning. So I want to move the object around in that square on the screen, because that's how it's learning the object, frame by frame in different positions. So I want to make sure there's not much background in there either, because the more background that's in there, great. It's going to see. I know that. what a beer can is. There we go, and you can see on the screen that's detected the beer can. You see it's put the blue box around it? So we've now taught the robot what a beer can is. Now we can do this for everything. Um, but we want the robot to actually interact with us now, right? And do something really cool that when it sees the beer can. So we're going to go into the camera control. And we'll go into uh, scripts. And script start tracking script. So this script will run whenever tracking begins, so whenever it detects any object at all. If you have a project that's already doing a lot of other visual tracking stuff, you can always check what type of tracking is being done. So if you look at the global variables here, we're going to see that there's a tracking type in here called um, object. It'll say um, object type, I think it is. Tracking type, right there. So tracking type is object. It's always a good idea to check to see if the tracking type that you're actually getting is the type that you expect. So we'll say if it's the, you know, the tracking type is actually the word object. And case sensitivity is important here. So if it's this, and the reason why we're doing this is because if you have, if your project for your robot is checking for colors and glyphs and faces and all these other things, you want to isolate what's going to happen um, for that specific tracking type. In this particular case, it's just object. So if it's just the object, we're going to speak. And we'll say out of the, the microphone, um, I see a, and then we'll put the variable of the object it detected, and it's called camera object name right there. Okay, and now we want the robot to do something um, visual, I guess, like physically. So <laughs> this robot does have an auto position which means there's probably a couple different motions that it can move into. And let's take a look and see what motions we have. So I right click in the script and it queries all of the, the skills that are added to my project and says, what can you do? And they all come back and they tell me. So the auto position, it can do, um, it can do something called asking, calm down, um, point with a right hand, let's do that. Let's make the robot point. Actually, let's find out what asking is. What do you think asking is? I'm thinking to myself. 
I don't know. We have to try that out and see. I don't know if it's going to work because asking to me feels like it's not um, the right thing to use. But <laughs> this a whole experiment anyway and see. There we go. And now when the tracking ends, that means like you've taken the object away from it and it no longer can see it anymore. We're going to put a script in there too. We're going to make the robot um, go back into the standing position w rather than, you know, whatever the asking position is. <laughs> so you might already have code in here. Again, you want to check what kind of object, tra uh, tra object type was the last detected. So th the same, the same uh, thing would apply. When the object track type goes away, if we write our if condition and take a look at our variables, we'll see that the object type is, is still there. So object type, or tracking type, sorry, not object type, tracking type, equals object. And again, I should add, if you're just, you know, this is, this is a project that you're just working on and this is the only thing you're doing, you don't actually have to type these commands in at all, these if conditions. You can leave the if conditions out because you might just be using this with object and that's it. And now let's make the robot go into the standing position. Stand. There. And we'll save this. Oh, there it's got it. I see a beer can. And he's got his hand on his hip. And then now I take the object away and you can see it's counting down here of how many frames. And now it's gone away. And then the robot's gonna go back into its original position. So that's cool. So we can teach it something else now. I have a latte panda box. Jeremy's offering things that aren't gonna work with object training. <laughs> um, let me show you what Jeremy was offering. Pull, grab me the pair of pliers or a stapler. It's not about flat. So, what, Jeremy, I said, learn this. Now, the trouble is, you kind of can, but you have to manipulate your environment. Because when you do object training, uh, it, it doesn't actually see the object. It sees whatever's in the square. And if you have something like this, and it can see all the background, it's going to learn the background. It doesn't know that w this and the background are two different things, right? It doesn't have a clue the difference between this and the door. So it's going to actually learn the door through the pair of pliers. So you want to put a piece of paper and have a well-lit area without a lot of light, um, without a lot of shadows, because it'll learn the shadows as well. So a very nice white background to an object if, if it's something that you can see through. And then it'll be able to learn it. Um, something else to, I guess, to note too is that when it does learn the object inside of the, the code, it actually converts it into a black and white image. So that's something to uh, to keep note of. So let's let's try it again. Let's teach it the uh, latte panda box. Learn a new object. Okay. What is the name of the new object? Latte panda. Excellent. Let me know when you are ready to teach me what a latte panda is. I am ready. I know what a latte panda is. Okay, so now let's see if it actually does know what a latte panda is. So I'll hold the latte panda box up. I see a latte panda. <laughs> there we go. It's 
Perfect. So now it's learned what a latte pad is. So that's uh, <laughs> it's a funny position that he goes into here, though. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if if uh, <laughs> it just kind of looks like he's got attitude. He's like, I know what a latte pad about is. <laughs> Let's do a close up so you guys can see what it looks like from here. Okay, so we'll do the latte panda box again. I see a latte panda. There we go. Learning my face, teaching my face. Yeah, we could do that too. Okay, so let's teach. Uh, let's teach the in move my face. And let's try teaching to my face. Now this is gonna be. It's gonna be interesting. First little test. I can't, <laughs> I'm gonna have trouble with this because I can't actually see um, the screen, right? So I don't know where my face is. <laughs> I can't see the screen. I'm gonna have to get Jeremy to help me. Or actually, we'll just teach a Jeremy's face. How's that? I was trying, but I can't see the screen. So I don't know. <laughs> okay, Jer so Jeremy, put your face in, I'll tell you. I'll tell you where to put your face. Okay, go down a bit. Down, down. Okay, right about there. <laughs> I know, it's annoying. Okay, here we go. Learn a new object. Okay, what is the name of the new object? Jeremy. Excellent. Let me know when you are ready to teach me what a Jeremy is. <laughs> I am ready. Okay, I'm gonna grab your head, Jer. I apologize for this in advance. <laughs> what if I just tilt it around? Because you're not gonna be able to know the square. <laughs> you don't know, I know, this is so weird. <laughs> I'm touching Jeremy. This is not social distancing. No. no. Okay, go a little forward, a little more. There we go. We want all Jer's face in the box. That's why I'm having to move forward a little bit. And I'm just kind of man in here. Now smile. Smile. Now frown. <laughs> Look sad because I'm touching you. There we go. <laughs> good face ex well, <laughs> I don't know if you need that face. <laughs> good face expressions is a good thing. And we're almost done. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> done. There, we learned a Jeremy. Get, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So let's, let's put Jeremy's face in front of the robot and see if it remembers Jeremy. Oh, yeah, no. It sees a Jeremy. <laughs> let's try. Let's try at least uh, something different than the than that one position he goes into. Whatever that position is, the uh, the <laughs> the ask position. So I'm going to go into the camera control, and we're going to set up servo tracking with the objects that we've learned. So let's check and make sure our script is not trying to move the robot into a position because we definitely don't want the robot trying to move, right, while we're trying to get it to learn something. So there's our auto position has been deleted. And our tracking end code, we want to make sure that's empty as well. Because we're no longer going to go into the stand position when we're done. There's no need for that anymore. We'll save that. And we'll go back to tracking, and in here, we're gonna turn on servo tracking, and then we have an x-axis and a y-axis servo. So the camera's mounted into the eye of the robot, which means that um, we, w we can control its head moving left and right, and up and down with the two different servos. So we'll click on the board port for x-axis. So let's see what happens when I move this. Oh yeah, that's moving his... Uh, that's moving his head to the left. And this is moving his head to the right. So X axis is correct. And now we want the Y axis, which as you guessed it is going to be 23. And then we'll have to adjust, adjust that accordingly for his up and down. I don't want to burn the servo out, so I know that there's only a certain 
a certain amount of down it can go. I think it's right about right about there. And then up. If it goes too high, then that little neck piece that you can see um, that's holding is it's kind of moving up and down there. That piece will pop out. <laughs> um, I might have to invert the direction because the max and min, but I don't think so. Let's click save. And we'll turn object tracking on, which it is. And then we'll center his head. So I'll just put it into the standing position. There we go. And now let's see if he detects the object and starts uh, tracking it. I see a latte panda. Oh. <laughs> he moved his head far to the right. He, his head moved really quickly. So if we look here, we can see that the horizontal steps are three. We're going to make them one because there's no need for him to be moving his head super, super, super fast. All right. Now let's center his head again. And we also might want to limit how far his head is moving because it turned really far to the left. So that might be too much. Let's try this again. I see a latte panda. Ah. So there you go. That's tracking with his head. So it's pretty good. We could tweak it a little bit more. I think one of the tweaks that I would have done uh, if I were going to continue on this right now is I definitely wouldn't make his head go as far to the left and right as these are configured. So let me, let me show you something else that, that can be done. Uh, we'll go into the camera tracking. And what I'll do here is set up two servos. Um, geez, though, I don't know. I don't know what another servo. Let's go take a look in the auto position. Because in the auto position, that's where the servos are going to be documented. And let's go into the standing position. And then we'll go to port edit mode here. And you can see all the servos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get his, his arm, which is this one here. This is his shoulder. It's on D15. What I'll do is I'll have his arm move up and down when the, with the object as it's being detected. Okay, this will be really neat. So D15 is the port we want. Actually, we'll use both. We'll use D15 and D19, and he'll be like a zombie. Give me the latte panda. Give me the Jeremy. So <laughs> watch what I'll do here. So D15 and D19. Remember those. So now we'll go into the camera. And I'm going to uh, turn off the x-axis because we don't really care about the x-axis for this config for this demo. So I'll set it for NA. And I'm going to go into the y-axis. I'm going to set up um, two servos here. I'm going to go to the multi-servo button. And multi-servo allows me to set up uh, multiple servos that have a ratio of each other. So we can use his head to look up and down. And then what will happen is the arms will be relative to the head position. So I'm going to add another servo here, and I'm going to select D15. And again, I have to specify the um, min and max position. So, so it's met. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the shoulders going outwards. <laughs> Do you see that? His, his arms are going that way, like a, like a butterfly, like he's going to fly. So I, I don't want that one. I want another servo. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's click Save and go back in the auto position. I guess I could have just tried. I could have clicked on the servo to see which one it was. I only guessed. There we go. So servo number, this one here, which is number one. Let's see. Yeah, that's the one. I can see it moving, pointing up now. Okay, so new servos to remember everyone, D14 and D18. 14, 18, 14, 18, 14, 18, here we go. 
So go back in here into the camera control, multi servo 14. And our min position. We'll bring it up. In the max position, this is how high it'll be. There we go. And now we're gonna add the other servo, which is just pushing the add servo button. And we'll make this one, what'd I say, Jer? 18. <laughs> and let's see if this one. I'm failing the test. Jeremy's failing. <laughs> So we'll do the same thing with this one. We could probably set up similar, um, similar, similar yeah. Blah, 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 blah. First time speaking, we can set up similar positions. He's very squeaky over there. <laughs> do you hear him? Sorry. Okay, what is the name of the new object? Cancel. <laughs> Okay, so um, he heard me say something that I didn't need to say. Okay, so there's our, our arms. <laughs> he looks like, his, look at the picture, he looks like a zombie. He's like, gonna come get you. I'm coming for you. So now that we have both servos set up, I'll put this uh, Latte Panda in front of him and we can make the uh, robot move up and down. So I'll set up the, uh... here, so I'll set up these grid lines that a little bit smaller than they were so you can tweak these right like anything that's up above here he's going to move up anything that's lower is going to move lower so let's see what happens go to tracking make sure object tracking is turned on it is okay here we go i see a latte panda <laughs> come down i see a latte panda I see a latte panda. So you can see his arms here. I'll put a bigger screen so you can see. I see a latte panda. <laughs> there we go. Now, I'll show you one, one other thing that I just thought of. So you know how his head is moving up and down with the, uh, with the arms? There is an option in the camera control, which I'll show you. That's called track by relative position. You put your cursor over here, though it's a lot of wording, but essentially what it means is the camera is not moving and instead the object that the, the servo you're controlling is moving based upon where the object is on the, on the, on, in the camera. So if I select this and then the camera is disabled, so this is the camera here which is on D23, let's just remove it entirely. Let's click on this X button. Now the only servos that are here is servo two and servo three. So for example here I can type in this, you know, left arm and right arm just for future reference. And now what's gonna happen is his head's gonna stay perfectly still, but the, uh, the arms are gonna move up and down. So I'll show you what this looks like. I see a latte panda. Now I did notice that up and down are reversed. So when I push the object, uh, the Latte Panda, further down on the screen, his arms were moving up. So we'll go back into the camera control, configuration, and we're gonna invert these two servo positions here. And then click Save. We can also increase the, the ratio as well. So this means like based upon um, how many how many degrees the vi the view actually is? You can make this a larger number. So we can we can go 1.5, and we can get get a larger uh, movement 
out of the servos. So we can even make it two. The thing is, it'll never go past the max and min limits. It'll just be, it'll just have a larger, uh, it'll respond with much, much more, there we go, much more movement. So let me go into full screen so you can see. I see a latte panda. I see a latte panda. <laughs> That's pretty wild. <laughs> so many little tricks, so many little things that you can do. Um, yeah, this is great. Now, I am going to end the stream because I think we are G2G, as I say, good to go. So I had a lot of fun tonight. This was, this was great. Any questions you have about what I've done, and if you want to see something different or more, go in the forum and ask me <laughs> because I love, I love doing these little, these little things. All right, everybody. It was really fun tonight again, having a couple of really fun nights in our, in uh, our weekends in a row. So this is pretty good. We're gonna get some nice weather this weekend too. I'm excited about that. I hope you guys get some good weather and you have a very safe and fun weekend and I will see you all next week and we'll do another live hack. And again, any questions you have, jump on the forum. There's Jerry saying goodbye. See ya.